All right, so we're back. So in order to split the cases, we gotta remove all the the, the primary, and we gotta remove the the timing cover here and the transmission all out. And then I think we're gonna start here on the primary side. That way we can remove the main shaft nut and stuff while it's all together here. So we cleaned up the workspace here, so we have a little bit of room here to work on this. So uh, stay tuned as we get working on this thing. All right, so we're starting to take this primary cover off. So this, uh, like I said in the beginning of this whole project, uh, I've had this bike for approximately 10 years now and finally doing something with it. But, uh, I mean, I mentioned earlier that it, it ran good. Um, obviously, it looks like after all this stuff we went through with this motor, it looks like it didn't run good. Um, but what I meant by running good it was is it had spark. It fired on both cylinders. And it didn't make a bunch of noise. And it ran. And it ran, ran flawlessly. Started first kick. Um, uh, you just some of the, as we turn apart, you know, that it kind of like makes me wonder how the heck that even was possible. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I guess, I guess now we're just going to take it apart and see what it looks like in here. So, so about 10 years ago, we worked on the primary because it had some problems with it. And fix it up so a lot of the stuff in here is new so that's really gonna be no surprise of course um, but like I said before to get this apart we gotta take the outer sides out first a bigger one like and a bigger one. I don't know which one it is this one I think yeah, it's just a couple sizes bigger than the other ones. It's already loose. Should be anyway. Looks like it's coming apart pretty easily so far. Oh yeah. Might not have to hit it, huh? Still has fresh oil in it. Oh, just trying to save the gasket or? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Is it sticking? Oh, it's just over here it is. little spot there. Oh, really? It's kind of ripped. No, oh, I got it good. Yeah, it's ripped. It's right. That's fine. It's, yeah, it's just a... It's stuck. Well, it's still coming apart. Well, I know. No, it ripped. Yeah, All I right. put this in new in a new primary chain 10 years ago. Oh, and a new rubber deal and a new adjuster and a new plug. Okay. Somebody had done something here, too. We need to investigate that. Looks like it's been... Some sort of like JB, potty or something. JB or some damn kind of thing. So they're like, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe they were stopping a leak. Who well, knows? the way that this thing kind of looks, looks like this thing was blown up at one time. So, or something. But anyway. I put, I put the new oiler thing in here. I mean, I put it all in new. This was new. The alternator was messed up. I put a, I used one of them in it. New washers. Correct nut. Most of this stuff was all wrong. Huh. All right, well, we're going to keep going out tearing this apart, so go ahead and stay tuned here. Yeah, with all the stuff removed, it like... Free it's gonna wheels. Be, if free wheels, yeah, it won't, it's going to be harder to take it apart. So, 
like like when we did the clutch swap in the 79 yeah, it was... you could set the brake and can't do that here you don't have a chain yeah so we're gonna have to rely on maybe like uh an electric impact or something and just hopefully rattle it loose and while holding the crank still somehow yeah If we'd have known the motor was coming apart, we would have did this part before we took the motor out. But we actually thought we were just going to... Well, it's a good thing we inspected stuff. Head. Yeah, it's a good thing we inspected stuff, I guess. Because we would never found these problems. And we'd be like, all of a sudden, everybody's like, why is this thing not running right? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. it again. And pull the motor. All right, so we're about ready to take this transmission cover off here. We got a couple, uh, couple more bolts or another nut to get off yet, and then they were all like hammered on there really tight. <laughs> so now we we had to use an impact to get them all broke loose. So. We weren't really planning on having to take this apart, but we kind of come across all these things as you go, you know, when you're working on old stuff by previous owners, that multiple probably over the years, and who knows, worked on what, and over-torqued everything, and <laughs> wow, it's just crazy. Yeah, Man, they might not have used a... A manual because it tells you everything in that those manuals most of the time it may not all be in the the right spot in the book where you think it should be but it's in there <laughs> most of the time it's in there so all right well stay tuned while we get ready to take this cover off here all right well there's the other nut we got to take off and it's already loose it's already loose <laughs> so you know, everything else is over tightened and this thing is not tightened. That's amazing. So luckily the little keeper is like keeping it from coming off. No, they're all broken off. Are they they're really? Gone. Yep, all gone. I thought you were fighting one there. No, I could feel the edge of one. Oh yeah, there it is. But it's not really there. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> Jeez. Nice. So now we gotta hold the clutch still and size this baby is. Might be the same as the other side, I guess. Nope. Bigger. Bigger. Oh. Oh. Maybe should have did this one first, huh? Oh, it's... Oh, remember it's loose. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> for us taking it apart anyway <laughs> we got some serious cleaning up to do yeah some some like let's not put a new let's not put a new keeper in see it's supposed to have one tab that goes on the keyway it's two. missing well, it's kind of there but the tabs are broke off that's supposed to hold it after you torque it and then this is the ratchet assembly Put the kicker, yep. Oh, let me see that again. I guess I wasn't looking at it. There's a bushing, and a ratchet, and a ratchet. It don't look like it's all laid up or anything, does it? No, it's actually in not too bad shape. It's normally really hard. And then we go put when we end, end up going back to put we this together. Index we, that. we gotta index it, time it, make sure it shifts the right spots. I don't know what gear we put it in, but I think we put it in fourth. So, but once we pull out all the gears, yeah, yeah, we're gonna lose all that anyway. Yeah. So, so we gotta clean, clean all this goo up out of here. Yeah. 
put all the transmission in the parts washer. So next we'll be taking well, we this take cover off. This, yep, this, there should be a screw in there, here, and down under here, I think, somewhere. Just one, maybe? There's at least three. Yeah, there's a bolt right there. I think that's all there is. All right, well, three. stay tuned here. All right, now we're back on this side, taking it apart. Um, that clutch basket here is falling off already, so. We gotta take the front sprocket off now. Yeah, we gotta remove the the alternator piece by piece. First, we'll take off the the stator part, the outer the outer uh, pickup, and then we can probably remove the the center piece. So, all right. Well, stay tuned here. Long-winded. Well, it's a little more realistic. going well maybe is it let's see <laughs> it looks like it but it doesn't look like it it's like catching on that one over here right over here yeah
I'm sure. Let's pull off the side. See you later. I can pull it by hand, but it wouldn't let me pull it off. No, it wouldn't let you pull it off by hand, but a little bit of some mechanical advantage and went a long way, I guess. <laughs> Frustrating. Jeez, there's the key and everything. So, all right. Now you gotta remember how that all went. Now there's a special puller for that. All right, that one fits. Oh, well, I guess I didn't try it. I guess it was loose. I think it sits on the splines. All right, got yeah. that ready? Yeah, I'm holding the motor back. Okay. All right, there, that's out. Move that clutch pressure plate. Yeah, they uh, kind of all fell out when we were moving it around. So you can still see I had the Uber plate on that yet from when I did it 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. All right, I well, stay tuned new. here. Yeah, this is all new, like you were going to say, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, stay tuned. I'll spread using the special hub hub tool here that pulls this out. Threads into the hub here, that's hub nut here. It's a taper. So oh, once yeah, it pops, tapered. once it pops, it pops. Oops. Well, that was nice. Pretty darn easy. And yeah. like I said, this was all apart here a while. So it's just coming apart easy. Not too much. The stuff we did. <laughs> the stuff we didn't get into, it's coming apart hard. The stuff we got did, it comes apart pretty easy because it's relatively nothing's changed over the last few years. So. All right, so we got mostly this thing tore apart. Um, we're at a good midway point here, as I mentioned a couple of things. Um, next steps are gonna be uh, taking this timing cover all off and taking the cams out and everything. And then we'll be pulling this cover. It's about ready to come off. Um, we'll be pulling that cover off and then we'll be able to remove the transmission out of there. You already saw that we removed all the clutch and clutch side stuff and the primary side. Um, but um, there's a chance that we can just replace the bushings. We might go that route, uh, as long as everything else is okay here. So, so as of now, we know we need bushings for sure, small end bushings for sure on these uh, connecting rods. We use this uh, rubber plastic coated rod right here to help lock the connecting rods still so they wouldn't rotate when we went to wrench on some stuff. So that was a nice little trick. Otherwise, a lot of the time, people take a lot of these main components off when it's in the motorcycle. But didn't know I was going to have to go this far into it. So, we got to go farther yet. So, stay tuned as we get ready to start taking this part off. And then removing the transmission stuff. And then we'll be able to split the cases apart. So, stay tuned. Alright, so we're going to work on taking the transmission cover off here.
Look at that snotty. They use enough of that. Oh. Just, uh, this is what? It's the indexing spring. Oh, yeah, so when you shift it? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> in the inside of the lay shaft, on the inside and the back side here, see here, there are these brass sh uh, shin bearings. Like, okay. And they got to fit on this pin. This one's not so bad, but that one that's in there, when you go to assemble this, you got to grease that so it stays. Because if you don't, and it falls out of there, you won't know it. Good too. Good. Okay. So, see, one side's smooth, and one side's got grooves. Grooves go out, so that it grabs oil right, and, and it lubricates it. against the gear. So. Sure. Okay, now, this is the shifter cam, and see if you watch here. It's moving the shift forks back and forth when I go like this. And that moves gears back in there. This one here is moving a gear way back there. See it? Yep. It's the bottom one. Yep, back here. Yep. yep. And so that's changing gears, see? Right. So this pulls out of here. And when you pull this out of here, it either pulls out or threads out. I can't remember. But I thought it just pulled out. So greasy. Uh, I don't think it's maybe it is threaded. But I didn't think it was threaded. But it might be. No, no it was just of, the suction just of the grease. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now once we get that out of there, this can all actually just pull out now. Now we want to put all these gears and these forks back in the same location. Lay it out like it was because we got to put this back like it was. See now, these two fit together. Right. So it goes back and forth. This goes back onto here. We want to put this just like it was. Because we don't know how long it's going to be apart. Right. We don't want it flipped around. Okay. Oops. We want to keep it just like it was. It makes putting it back together. And these are brass, by the way. The, the shift works. Shift works are brass, yes. Okay, here's the lay shaft. And the lay shaft, and there goes the same way, see? So we're going to lay this just like that. Oh, this one's stuck here, see? Oh. There it is. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about that a minute ago. Yep. And it would go right on that pin. See that pin back in there? Yeah, off to the left there. Yep. So that Oops. would, when you go yeah. to put this in right here, back here, you'd have to put that like that. You put some heavy grease on it. There. And then it stays there. Kind of almost sits over that bearing a little too. So it kind of stays there. Is that bearing good? I don't, I don't know yet. But we also, since this is worn or used, we don't want to mix these up. But it wants to stay here now. Oh, there it goes. Okay. We'll put that back on here like it was. Now. Yeah. Yeah, it turns pretty good. Okay. 
Now fourth gear will stay in here. This is final gear right here. It's hooked to the sprocket and on the back side of this here there's a big nut. So it's held there and it it'll just stay there. We're okay. not taking it off. We're not missing any teeth. Looks like it's not cupped. It looks or, like all the gears are in good shape. They're not cupped or excessive wear. No, there's I can see no right eroding now. on the teeth. In fact they got the little grooves on them from when they were milled. See that? That you know what I mean? Yeah, the machine like, machine grooves, like yeah. the marks, like the well, machine. You can feel it with your fingernail. It's yeah. Pretty well, cool. that's a positive yeah. <laughs> so far in this. Yeah, so far I don't see anything real. We got some crap we got to clean up in oh, here. Definitely, obviously, clean. but definitely got to clean. Yeah, it looks like thick. Yeah, thick sludge. Yuck. Well, we'll clean that when we clean the cases. All right, next off, we're going to be heading into the, the cam cover here. The cams. See what that looks like we, in there. We can take this out, too. Oh, the actual shifter index? I think we can take it out. Unless it's hitting fourth gear and it won't let us. Oh, it comes out. See, and then this drives on that. See? That's got some rust on it, but that's probably not a big deal. We'll clean Her. it. That's why I want to take it out. Yeah, I see that. Yep, okay. All right, well, stay tuned here. All right, there's like eight case bolts to hold this thing together, and two of them are right here, and we got to take the oil lines off and the fitting right here off. So we have a couple down here, and then over here is one. And then we got one right here. And then from the other side, there's one right here. Comes across and comes across here. So that's like eight. All right, but we're oh, gonna... actually there's one more here too. Oh, so... and then yeah, there's one back here. So there's like nine of them. Nine. Yeah, I don't think there was any more. Nine. Yeah, that's just it. So we'll work on taking that stuff off. So stay tuned. All right, so we start taking this off here. Just lightly tapping it. We don't want to deaden it, of course, using a dead blow hammer. Well, it doesn't want to seem like it wants to go. Imagine that. There's just enough clearance for that nut. You can't put a box end on it. The gasket's really holding, or otherwise they're using Yamba Bond here also. <laughs> so. Well, it's moving. <clears throat> yeah, I felt it move. It's like, just like, it's got a big old chunk of something right here. It looks it's like gasket. Yeah. But it's probably Yamba Bond. Yeah. Yamabond. Yeah, some sort of glue. Oh, yeah. They glued it, too. Good thing I don't know that guy. I mean, we didn't use none of that stuff on the Bonneville. It's, it's been sitting all winter long and more, and it hasn't leaked yet. <laughs> that sounds probably sounds crazy for some people because. And then they use silicone too. Oh no. Okay. Well, well, this this piece sticks out, so I might have to I might have to actually tap on it. Not really Oh, it moved. Did it? Yeah, it looked like it did. I don't want to hit too. I don't want to hit the case too much. Yeah, we don't want the with all the lines loose from the block. Oh, either. we don't want to break that loose or we'll be buying a new one of them. And I don't want to jam a screwdriver in there because that creates a forever leak. <sighs> Whoops. That's not supposed to be like that. All right, well, we got it off. And it has like a little ding dent in it down here. That's where it got smashed. And yeah, it was stuck on there pretty dang good. I wiggled it off. We were able to get it off without having to pry on anything and break anything. 
has a benefit. So, all right, well, stay tuned. We're working on taking the cam cover off now. All right, so we moved the point cover here, and this bolt here goes into the cam, so um, we can't forget to take that one off. So if we forget to take that one off and all the other ones off, we'd have a hard time getting it off yet anyway, otherwise it possibly could pull the cam out with it, wouldn't it? No, but you'll see here. Get this off right here. So you gotta get this off before it comes off. So Oh all the uh, eccentric? Yeah. Auto advance. Special special tool here, a little slide hammer. Yeah, one side or the other, depending on which thread it is. Here we go, we got them all loose. Loose is one thing. Oh, there's another. Oh, I missed, missed one. Oh, yeah, I guess I did miss that one. I thought I saw you do that one. I did not, <laughs> I guess. That thing. Dang thing up here keeps wanting to move, and I don't like that. I don't know how I want these connecting rods to bang into the cases. Oh. Causes problems. It's something you really want to avoid. That's kind of why we got the rod in there. Too long or the longer ones. There's something to reference there. If I remember correctly. Else yeah, the long, bottom ones are the long ones. You can all, tell these are all shorter. I think all the rest of them are, are the same. Because the, the, yeah. the shallow back here. Now, whatever you want to do, we don't want to hit on this either. Pressure switch? Yeah, well, you can break this out, it's pretty thin. All right. Well, here it comes. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hopefully this is like the other area that the person never got into. It don't oh, like... it's got. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's got. It stuff. does have Yam Bond glue stuff. Yeah, they've been in here. I was hoping they weren't into the transmission because the transmission yeah, see, because really good. silicone all over. Oh yeah. Inside and out. Look at that. Yeah, this is no go. <laughs> Goobers. That stuff breaks off and gets clogged in passages, and it's just oil pumps. Oil pumps. Yeah, because this is oil pump here. It's driven off this cam right here and each one goes up and down as this thing rotates it's a really neat little device this is supposed to stay in there and then this this turns now What's that? there is timing marks what does that say i don't know looks like yama bond um there is timing marks on this Somewhere. Oh, there's one right here's the whole dot. Here's a dot. Okay. Should be two dots. There's two dots. There's one right here. And they, uh, so and then they're marked down here. Yeah. So it lines you, up with the right yeah, here. So is. you got to line them all up. Now, so at one point in time, but they, they only line up every 97 revolutions. So to test it or to check and see if it's wrong would take a long time. So it's easier just to take it. And jump this and line them all up and then put it back together. Then you know it's right. Okay. That's well. one way to do it. The book says it's like every 97 revolutions. Like Once every 97 revolutions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're going to take off the rest of this stuff and take these gears out. So stay yes. tuned here. All right, so we saw some damage on that nut, and God, I hope I can get it. it looks like looks like something was in here, in the crank. There's no reason this should be all scarred up like that. So we're gonna try diligently to not to be able to get this off without getting any further damage on it. So we probably need a new nut. So stay tuned. All right, well we got it off. It was a struggle we both needed to get after it so I wasn't able to show the struggle we had with it but it was it was rough so now we're putting this special puller gear puller on there I'm gonna pull the pinion gear off Gotta get that nice and tight. Okay. Here we go. Out. See, it fits around this edge. Oh, yeah, and just perfectly. Yep. Now you can turn this. Oh, I got it already. I was going to say. It's key. The key's coming out already. Okay, so we'll lay that in there. All right, cool. Convenient tool. Yeah. All right, well, stay tuned. Okay. So there we go. We got the pinion gear off, and now on to the next step here. We are not going to pull these nuts on both of these cam gears and pull it off the cams because the cam lobes are good. And so we are not going to replace the cams. If we were going to replace the cams, see both the lobes look really good. There's not any real wear on the lobes. So the only thing we will do is we will pull this pump off because obviously there was a lot of crap and crud and everything else that went through this pump. We may even replace the pump. You hear it. It may be scarred up with because this is a plunger pump. Right. The bigger one is scavenge, 
This smaller one, if you see, there's two different sizes there. The smaller one is the pressure side. The scavenger is the bigger because this is a dry sump motor. So it sucks back more than what is pumped in. So it always keeps the motor dry. That's why it's that way. Hmm. So. All right, cool. Well, next thing we're going to do is take the cases apart. Yes. So stay tuned. Okay, so we started taking this oil pump off here, and there we got these are special nuts that holds this on, and they have a special washer. So, and here's what the nut looks like it's dished on one side. Oop. It's dished on one side, and it's you can't get on it very well. Kind of caved. It's got to be down with a wrench. So, one of the washers is missing. So, someone, <laughs> the guy, I don't know his name, but we'll call him Louie. <laughs> What's in this thing? Yeah, also, so. No offense to anyone named Louie, of course. <laughs> yeah, is it? We can pull out the magnet. We're gonna try to remove the this little cover here. Otherwise, this is pretty much as far as part we need to take it out here. But next, it's gonna be taking the bolts off. So. I'm thinking this comes out of here, but and then splitting the cases. Maybe, maybe it's a magnet. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it sits behind on the bearing. No, it comes out. Then we can see our main bearings. Yeah. Maybe. There we go. Well, I guess we can't really see him, but there is a bearing there. There's a bearing there. <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned. And we'll take these uh, these main case bolts all out and nuts off and. Split it apart here in a few minutes. All right, so we got all the all nine bolts out of here and nuts and stuff, and we got it to start to separate here. Well, all right. Well, stay tuned here as we pull this the rest of the way apart. All right, there it goes. So I can't see nothing here. <laughs> I got it. Bearings look nice. Bearings look nice. We're gonna have to pull the crank. That's the next step. All right. Well, let's get that part. Take it out of there. Check it over. All right. All right. So we got it apart here, and we got really thick sludge down here in the very bottom of the cases uh, on both sides. We're going to get all cleaned up there. Um, we're going to have to maybe check out this crankshaft some more, but it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Bearings look like they're in good shape. The wall bearings in here are good feeling. Yeah, so does this bearing. It looks good. good. I don't see anything bad in that bearing. Good, because that bearing looks like it would have to be honed or something. And no, you got to take out the race and just put a whole new one in. Oh, really? Yeah. Nothing like a Harley one then. No, it's kind of like a Timken, only it's flat. It's like a Norton bearing. Right. It's rollered. It's not tapered for like. For like, uh, tapered is usually good for like thrust and stuff, but this one here is just straight across. Got a ball on the timing and a roller on the drive side. All right. Well, we're about to another half midway point here, so 
Stay tuned. All right, Thanks. so here's the crankshaft, and uh, we need to see the lower end bearings. So we're going to have to take these caps off the connecting rods, and then we'll be able to see what the, the bearings look like in there. So that's going to be like one of our next steps here. So stay tuned. All right, so we just got the connecting rods off of here, and uh, this one over here looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, no excessive wear or any scratches or any galling or glitter or anything in this one. And these little notches need to be adjacent from each other on the same side. Like and this. and this is, uh, they marked it when they had this together or apart or whatever. So this is, the dots are, were facing forward. So we'll reference that later when we go to put it back together. <laughs> now that was the, that was the, the um, timing side. The timing side. Kicked rod. Now over here is a different story a little Drive bit. Side. This is the yeah the clutch and side primary side. There's galling in the in the bearings down here on both and sides. Glitter in and there. then there's some glitter over here. The the notches here were orientated right, but um, we're gonna have to just put bearings in the in the one connecting rod. Well, maybe I'll. Maybe we'll just do both. But the journals on the connect on the actual flywheel here look pretty good. Um, there is a sledge trap in here, and it's access to this little screw hole door here. Um, we can't seem to get it to open, so we're gonna we're gonna pressurize it and see if we can get some oil to come out these holes. So stay tuned. All right, so we're putting oil inside here. Um, this is something you don't want to overlook. This is one of the things you should do is make sure that sludge trap is either clean or we definitely have oil flow when we're down this far into the motor. Got drippage, you ready? All right, it's coming out the bottom. Oh, look at it. And it's really, it's really gross. <laughs> it's really glittery. And we got to clean the trap. So we got to clean this trap. <laughs> So, yeah, we can't run this through our motor. So, stay tuned. We're gonna heat this up so we can get this this uh, this uh, sludge trap plug out of there. So, it's kind of seized up. So, just want to heat up a little bit. So, this is yeah, it's a bad Loctite. It's, this will clean it up and make it come, well, hoping, hoping it'll come out easier that way. special tool on this driver here it's kind of moon shaped let's see if it comes out here there we go. Hey, look at that look at all that crap in there it's actually a lot well it's hard to say, but it's a lot cleaner than I looked, thought it would be, but it's still dirty, but it's not full of stuff, you know, and stuck. It's got a lot of stuff in there, though. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, though. We're gonna stuff get that needs up. to be out. Black tar. Wow, that's what's in there. Okay, yeah. so we got oil getting fed in through here. And it's coming out a little hole right off to the side there. And then as this thing's rotating really fast, high for RPM, 3,000 RPM, or even in, in RPMs, so it's spinning around. It's scattering whatever's coming out all over the wall inside of there. That out here. And then 
and then what happens is it just like gets trapped in the little piece that's inside there. If we can get it out, more crap. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. Like yeah, this is what's important. We gotta clean this out because if that oil passage gets blocked with from that stuff, it just locks stuff up and it'll break a rod. Yeah, break a rod or something. Yeah. Now to get that damn thing out of there, it uh, they sometimes stink. Sometimes you got to put a tap in them and you got to hammer them out. It's all full of goo down in there. Alright, well, stay tuned. I'm going to clean this out and get that piece out of there. Alright, so down inside there, there's a little notch sticking out. You can kind of see it right down over here on this side. It's held, this sludge trap piece that's in here is held in place with this bolt right here. So we're going to back that out. So then we can unlock it. And we can get this trap actually out of there. So, stay tuned. All right, so we got the sludge trap out of there, and uh, we can see that it's full of grime in there, like caked up across the, on the outer wall of it. And then I just had the tube here, and it was uh, it's coated with stuff. This hole over here is supposed to be a communication hole, and it's plugged. Plugged. There's actually two, one for each journal. There's one there, and one here. Oh yeah, see them? Yeah, they're both blocked. And this one's where that that bolt comes through and hooks into. And somebody it missed it. Yeah, yeah, it's dented because it got missed. That's why we had trouble getting it out. Yeah, because it was all smashed into the stuff and out of out of rounds, so we couldn't get it out very easily. So now we're gonna get this thing all cleaned up, parts washer, get it ready to go back together, and go from there. Stay tuned. All right, so here we go. We got the we got this crank for the tr tiger here uh, in the vise right now. Um, we noticed that there was some scoring or some lines in this one journal here for one of the for one of the um, rods. So we took it into a machine shop and they said it was needing to be cleaned up. So we're going to end up having to oversize this to point zero one zero. Yeah, ten thousandths, I mean. And then, um, yeah, yeah, so anyway, so what we got to do is we got to, they can't get in there with the machine, so we got to separate this thing. So we got to remove these bolts. We already had the one removed from the sludge trap. You saw that part. Then we got to remove this one here, and then there's another one on this side here. So we'll remove that. Then we can pull the center piece out of here. Actually, we got to press it out. And then, uh, We'll go from there. So stay tuned as we work on this here. All right. So what we did was we marked it so because we, we wanted this to come right back where it was. So we found this little nice mark that was already in the, <laughs> the flywheel here, and then we marked the other piece right across from it. I think we're going to be able to see it later. So get close. It'll get close enough anyway. So stay tuned here. All right, these bolts are held in with like Loctite, blue Loctite, to keep them from spinning, falling out. So that way, when you're spinning this motor over at like three, four, five thousand RPM, they don't come flying out and just tear the cases in half. Because <laughs> um, there's barely any clearance in there when this this flywheel's in there. So and they are a Whitworth size bolt too. And they're pretty a tight fit, so once they're unthreaded, it's kind of a bugger to pull them out. Yeah. <clears throat> so, stay tuned. Well, that's what the bolt looks like. Yeah. 
kind of uh, Loctite. Yeah, it's Loctite right there. And then there's this little pin here, that alignment pin, that falls into like a little hole that's in the center part. So this will help us find that uh, position as well, as long as we have them lined up. So stay tuned as we pull this thing, get this thing removed here, get it ready for the machine shop. Five ton or better. Five ton or better press to press this out. So. Yeah, wow. Is it sticking somewhere? Is it going to press it out crooked? That might. I mean, you're pressing all of it on that one side. But then if you press on the pinion shafts or whatever you're gonna that's a weak spot too so don't look like it can go that way hmm. All right, we got them separated. All we had to do was press on the pinion shaft, and we were making more work out of it than it was because we ended up binding it by pushing on the one side. So we learned something here. So just press in the center. So now we got it separated. The ring just kind of comes out, a little puzzle piece, and then now we can take it to the machine shop, and they can fix our journals here. Oversize them a little bit. We'll have brand new bearings in it. We could have left it, but we would have had less oil pressure because they weren't really that bad. But we didn't want to lose oil pressure, so we're going to replace it with do it the correct way. So stay tuned. All right, so here's the the crank assembly all disassembled for the Triumph Tiger motor, and we're going to send this to the machine shop, of course, like I said, to clean up these journals here where the rods ride on. Um, this is the, the balance ring, of course, we took that off, you saw all that, but um, this kind of wraps it up for this segment. Um, what we'll do is, is I'll finish up cleaning up these cases really good in the parts washer, get all that grime out. So in the next, uh, next part, you'll be able to see this thing all going back together, hopefully. So I hope you enjoy, enjoyed all this. We went through here on this. Um, it was kind of entertaining. It's too bad uh, a lot of the work we got to do to it, but it's how it goes when you work on these old bikes and, and stuff. And yeah, so like I said, hope you enjoyed all this and we'll see you again soon.